to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today's video, I'm going to talk about making one tree at a time with these young dogs. These dogs that have just rolled over and getting some woods time and maybe have treed a couple coons or something like that. Me, myself, if these dogs make 10 coons one at a time, um, I'm happy with that. And that's good to go ahead and transfer over into however we're going to hunt these dogs. But before we jump too far into the video, I want to give some shout outs. Shout out to Kurt Culbertson. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for your comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, the next shout out is going to be John Nishimoto. Now, John, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, but I really do appreciate you coming in and subscribing. Now, with those shout outs out of the way, I'm going to just go ahead and put this out there for you guys. I cannot see every single person who subscribes to the channel because some people have private YouTube accounts. Some people don't. I only see certain people um pop up and let me know that they have went ahead and subscribed so if i've missed a shout out for you guys i'm sorry but i really do appreciate you guys as well okay so let's go ahead and jump into the video um building a consistent process with a dog that is very simple and easy to repeat um making one tree at a time okay so we're going to make one tree at a time until we get what we want out of that dog we get the the speed we get you know they get to figure out their tree style they're getting their locate figured out these are all very easy to do one tree at a time one tree a night um not one whole home tree i'm talking about one plus them up tree okay so when we get into this it's consistency that we're looking for to be able to get and to get consistency we have to have a repeatable process and to establish a process we have to have a easy process to be established and that is going from getting cut to the coon coming down and getting out of the woods. The whole process we need to pack in that dog. And the dog really needs to understand how we are going to hunt and handle the dog. And the dog really needs to understand what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. And doing it one little chunk at a time, one tree at a time, is the perfect way to do that. Okay, so the next one is going to be um, we're going to build speed. Okay, I kind of touched on it a little bit. But the easier it is, the faster they go. And... Um, when we are kind of curbing how much wood time they get and we're maximizing how much positive reinforcement they get, the, the rocket ship that you're going to have when you cut your dog, this is how you get there. Um, and getting the coons down to them, especially in these first early stages, um, because we, for one, we want them to really get ingrained in their head. Um, the more the more fur you get in their mouth, the less likely they are to run trash on you. The the more likely they are to tree another one. Okay, so shooting coons down, especially for the first first ten coons at least, um, is is huge in my opinion. Now other guys may never ever shoot a coon down to any dog, but that is them. I am me. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the good experience that it builds. It builds very good, solid, consistent experience. And it curves the chances of us having negative experience in the woods. Can they make a bad experience between one tree? Yes, they absolutely can. But we can minimize the risk of having a bad experience with our dog um, by cutting them one tree at a time. Now, uh, one tree a night. Um, the last one is, well, not the last one, but the next one is going to be conditioning. Okay. So we want to condition dogs in a healthy manner. And especially these young dogs, some of them are not in the best of shape. They ain't been hunted a lot. They ain't been in the woods a lot. They're not used to being out there running and going and going and going. So building that little bit of conditioning one night at a time, one tree at a time, it kind of prevents over exhaustion. It prevents, you know, overworking the dog. And what it really curves is burnouts. And now everybody knows that dogs can get burnt out. People have ran them in the ground. They don't want to run no more. And then you have these dogs, you know, you have a lot of dogs going around that people say they hunted like champs for the first nine, ten months, year that they were hunting. And then they just fell off and they don't want to hunt no more. It's because they ran them in the ground. Okay, so... With every good comes a bad, so this is the bad of this, of cutting one tree at a time. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that cutting for only 10 trees or only 5 trees until we really get what we want to see out of that dog can create too many negative side effects of that dog, and it's nothing that we can't easily transition out of. 
it is when we stay in for and stay locked in for a exuberant amount of coons and an exuberant amount of trees that we're hunting, cutting, making one tree and shooting coons down to a dog. This will create issues in your dog if you do not pay attention to how much is too much. Okay, so they won't want to leave the tree unless you shoot a coon. Okay, so this is the first issue that we create when we shoot every single coon down to a dog that they treat is when they don't get a shot down to them, they are baffled, they are razzled, they don't know what is happening, they won't leave that tree or they'll come back to that tree. Okay, so uh, the, the second one is kind of hand in hand with this, but it has less to do with the coon and more to do with recutting the dog. So when we do this and we can walk our dog a distance and recut, it may just stand there and go, um, uh, I don't know what you want me to do. I've been making one tree for the last year. I'm not making another one or I don't even know what the concept of making another one is. So there's an issue that you have to work out of your dog there. And then uh, the last one, now this this is kind of go either way, um, depending on how you hunt and, and what kind of stuff that you're into, um, is you're less ready for competition hunts. Um, actually, you're quite the opposite of a competition hunt when you hunt this way permanently um, because we're, we're not recutting and we're shooting. So it's kind of like this is the exact opposite of, uh, exact opposite of comp hunting. But I think I'm going to wrap that video up. I compressed it as much as I could. There's so much more, you guys. If you have any questions about this, please get down there and hit a, a comment for me. And I will try my best to answer it. And if you guys want to see more of these sit-down talking videos, just let me know. And I will keep kicking them out. I'm trying to keep the channel pretty balanced between now and uh, like sitting down talking stuff and getting in the wood stuff. With that being said, I do have just like, I don't have all the time in the world to stay in the woods permanently. Um, so we're all gonna try to grow a community here i'm gonna try to grow a community here i really hope that you guys like the videos and the stuff that you see and i'm gonna keep trying to hit the nail on the head and keep the channel on a track and um you know i thank you cash man thanks you thank you guys for coming in please get down there and uh, check out my channel and drop a subscribe i would really greatly appreciate it and we'll get you shouted out